Hello, welcome back to my channel. I am talking to you today about PCOS versus HA. So I have done podcast episodes and written a blog post about this, but I also wanted to make a YouTube video about it because it's a really important, very common topic, right? So, so, so many women who have HA have been originally or at some point diagnosed with PCOS by a doctor. And this is so interesting to me because it's so common and I can see where it's coming from, but it just shouldn't be happening. So I'm going to break it down for you a little bit right now, okay? The main similarity between PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome and hypothalamic amenorrhea is that both come with menstrual irregularities. But the truth is that that is where the buck stops. So let's go over the main differences that we see and how you can identify them. The first difference is you either have a period or you don't have a period, right? So PCOS, if you have not had a period in six months, one year, two years, three years, etc., and your doctor is telling you you have PCOS, this just actually doesn't make sense because you technically would have a period. Now, often with PCOS, we see women have periods that are over 30 days, 60 days, 80 days, maybe even 90 days, but they are having periods. With HA, you are not having a period at all. So that's a huge key difference. Now we might have both, and I have some podcast episodes uh, that you can check out with experts on this topic, but you can have both PCOS and HA. The thing is, you need to deal with the HA first in order to get to the PCOS. Like, Imagine there's a landslide and an injured skier is stuck inside of a cabin and there's a landslide and now they're underneath layers and layers of snow. Before you can get to that injured skier to help them, you first need to get through the layers of snow to even get to them, right? We need to get your period back so we can then address the challenges that we're seeing caused by the PCOS. So there's that. Difference number two is follicles on the ovaries. So this is where a lot of the misdiagnosis comes in, I believe, is that we go to our OBGYN, we get an ultrasound and they see a bunch of follicles and they're like, oh, she has a lot of follicles. She's not having regular periods. So it's probably PCOS. The thing is, it's not uncommon if you have HA to have lots of follicles. The difference is that no follicles are being brought to maturity and you're not ovulating, but you can have lots of follicles. And so there is criteria that must be met for PCOS and you should see this string of pearls, for example, a large buildup of cysts. And if the doctor is just seeing enough, they might say this looks like PCOS, but it can just look that way and not actually be that way. And so it's really important that the doctor be taking a really close look, really close count on those cysts, making sure it's actually fitting the criteria and that it's not the only criteria that they're basing it off because you can have a lot of cysts a lot of follicular development. They are the same thing often. You can have them when you have HA. Difference number three is your lab testing, okay? So there are definitely some labs that will come back in the normal range for HA and for PCOS. And so it's like, oh, I can't really you know, decipher. But there are also a bunch of labs that should be coming up high if you have PCOS. So if you have PCOS, you'll be having elevated estrogen and you'll be having elevated androgens. With PCOS, you won't be having those things. So I'll often have clients come to me and say, I don't know what I have. This is my lab work. Look, I'm not an expert on lab work. I, I don't read lab work professionally, but I do know enough about the reference ranges to be able to say all your stuff is low to normal. And that is indicative of hypothalamic amenorrhea. All of your labs are coming back normal to high and elevated. This is more indicative of PCOS. The fourth difference here, this is a big one. It may surprise people, but I think that as a coach who has talked to so, so many women with PCOS and with HA, that we can learn a lot about you just by talking to you and learning about your lifestyle and your habits and your belief system and how things in your brain are working. So I will often quiz women and I'll ask them if any of the following sound like you. You exercise daily. When you exercise, it's intense. When you don't exercise, you feel anxious or upset. You are usually dieting or watching what you eat in some way. Your body weight is low, not 100% indicative of HA at all. No, but it's a good clue for those who do have low body weight. You have type A tendencies, strive for perfection and excellence always. You don't experience 
coarse facial hair growth in male pattern areas on the body or the face. You have not had a period in three plus months and this is not something that regularly happens to you, right? So like maybe if you're getting a period exactly every three months, every single time, maybe we'll look a bit at PCOS there, but suddenly it's been three months and it's nowhere in sight. This isn't a regular occurrence for you. These are all clues that tell me, okay, those lifestyle factors, those behaviors, they are um, very HA indicative. Those behaviors can be developed by people who have PCOS because the doctors, the recommendations are often to do things like lots and lots of exercise and intensely watching what you eat and eating in a very specific way. But for the most part, if that's not where you're coming from, this is a big clue about HA. So a few lifestyle factors when I hear this, I think maybe you do have PCOS, is that you don't exercise out of compulsion. You don't have type A or obsessive tendencies. Your body weight is not too low. Not that that's 100% indicative. You do experience coarse facial and body hair growth in male pattern areas, and you have had a period regularly, and those are just the lifestyle factors alone. There are more, right? Skin, skin breakouts, signs of high estrogen, right? When you don't have a period, you have very low hormonal production. So typically you're very dry vaginally, typically you won't see changes in skin and body odor, greasiness, things that are common in people with high hormone activity. If you are seeing those things and thinking, oh, PCOS. Now through the process of recovery, we typically go from no hormone symptoms to having some, which is great. And that's a mark of progress and something we use to see if you're on the road to recovery, but we can quickly see if you're having symptoms of too much of this hormone production. And at that point we might be like, oh, resolved your HA, but maybe we're also seeing PCOS symptoms if that makes sense. I hope it does. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments and I will try to elaborate. So I mentioned at the beginning what it means if you have both, right? That we really wanna be addressing the HA in order to address the PCOS. But the thing is, the good news is that regardless of whether you have one or the other or both, right? Maybe you have both, maybe you just have PCOS, maybe you have HA and you still are not convinced by this video, which one might be for you. The good news is the protocol is largely the same, okay? I do not prescribe to, if you have PCOS, you should over-exercise and go full PCOS diet, yada, yada. I actually don't prescribe to that. And in HA, I don't prescribe to absolutely zero exercise and eat tons and tons of junk to get your period back. No, for both, it's all about self-care. It's all about stress management. It's all about including highly nutritious, important foods in your diet that balance blood sugar, that manage stress, cortisol, that have you not hyped up on stimulants. I am all about for either seeing your nutritional intake overall. Are you having carbs, proteins, and fats? And are you getting them from a variety of different foods? Or are you like always eating the same thing? Are you restricting certain things? The principles are actually very similar. We just have lots of different levers for balancing our hormones, lack of a better term, for restoring health, for getting at optimal healthy menstrual cycle. Truthfully, the levers are the same for many, many conditions. And it's all about looking at the individual, their lifestyle, their behaviors, their symptoms, and figuring out which of those do we, which levers do we pull. So regardless of whether or not someone has HA or PCOS, I'm looking at their symptoms and I'm pulling levers. I'm not looking at them as just one diagnosis and saying you have HA, so we pull all these levers. You have PCOS, so we pull all these levers. No, it doesn't actually matter which one you have. I'm gonna be looking at you and the, the symptoms that you have and the lifestyle behaviors that you have and making a protocol based on that. So I think it's really important to note, right? That regardless, you're an individual and you should be looking more at your symptoms to help than just your diagnosis and what do people do for that. Because the truth is, if you go down the PCOS route and just like calorie restrict really hard, you're gonna end up with HA anyway. So like that's just not sustainable and it's not sustainable for many, many people. And same the other way around, right? If you go fully all in and eat to a maximum discomfort forever, well, that's not sustainable either. Both of these things are, they just need to be managed. They need to have sustainable ways. So I hope that this video was helpful, that you have some clarity on whether or not you have PCOS, HA, or both, and how you wanna handle it. 
if you would love any help with that we do HR recovery coaching you could work with myself you could work with one of my co-coaches you can learn more about that at the hasociety.com forward slash coaching otherwise please post your questions below or find me on instagram at the ha podcast and at danny sheriff and i'd love to chat with you and help out in any way that i can and don't forget to subscribe to this show give us a thumbs up and check out our podcast the hypothalamic amenorrhea podcast bye